So hi, I'm here with uh, Dr. Sanya Jellick, uh, who just gave a fabulous, fabulous presentation at the plenary session here at Vascular Discovery. The topic of the plenary session was really how our environment interacts with our um, vascular disease, cardiovascular risk, and how that can affect sort of the biology of what we know actually drives cardiovascular disease. So we had uh, an array of speakers um, speaking about uh, pollution and global climate crisis and how that affects cardiovascular health. Uh, we heard about COVID and how the, the threat of the, um, the pandemic and the implications on the cardiovascular system. And then Dr. Jellick gave us a fabulous talk on the importance of sleep apnea on cardiovascular health. So sleep apnea is something that, of course, many of us uh, you know, have heard of or, or know, know family members that have it or have it ourselves. But can you just describe the, the importance of it on cardiovascular health that may be not as, as well understood? So obstructive sleep apnea is one of the most prevalent chronic conditions in the world. One billion people suffer from obstructive sleep apnea, which is on par with the hypertension, which is about 1.2 billion people worldwide. However, unlike these other uh, uh, well-known cardiovascular risk factors, sleep apnea seem to be somewhat, shall I say, neglected. And uh, to the point that a uh, vast majority of patients with sleep apnea are not diagnosed. And that is important because obstructive sleep apnea triples the cardiovascular risk. Uh, depending on the severity, it increases uh, the risk for uh, cardiovascular diseases such as hypertension, coronary artery disease, heart failure, stroke, two uh, point something to three times, uh, again, depending on the severity. So we think it is uh, one of the uh, less uh, well-known, lesser known uh, cardiovascular risk factors. And we think it is very important to raise awareness of this condition and its cardiovascular uh, consequences. So beyond the clinical importance, which is um, really fascinating, and I think, like you said, under underappreciated, you also showed us um, some of the biology that you've discovered, you and your team have discovered, which is absolutely fascinating how you can show that the way that sleep apnea in, in patients actually affects their vascular system, which is very interesting. So when you look at that, you look at the, 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 the clinical data that you've been observing as well as the mechanism, where do you see, what are the next steps? What are the, what are the things you think in the field are really going to be um, next for you and your, and your colleagues? So we found, uh, 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 we thought it was important to do uh, a translational study uh, focusing on the biology in humans because although major discoveries are obviously uh, uh, made in animal models, sometimes or rather frequently it does not really correspond with the human data. So we took advantage of our methods that we can obtain um, endothelial cells from people and interrogate them in, uh, using basic science methods. So we found several pathways which are, uh, which are involved in many diseases such as complement pathway, cholesterol pathway, coagulation pathway, play a role also in uh, uh, vascular pathobiology uh, underlying this uh, cardiovascular risk in sleep apnea. So we think that um, we are uh, particularly focused on a cholesterol metabolism pathway and uh, we are still uh, working to uh, understand fully the uh, entire mechanisms or as much as we can. And we also think it has a therapeutic potential and we already conducted a pilot randomized uh, placebo controlled trials of lipid lowering therapy with statins showing that it does exert some uh, uh, benef beneficial effects on vascular function in patients with obstructive sleep apnea regardless of their uh, lipid profile. So one thing that would stem from these mechanistic studies would be uh, clinical studies uh, uh, asking a question whether uh, sleep apnea should be considered something like diabetes. Uh, regardless of your lipid profile, maybe the patient should be uh, considered for lipid lowering therapy. And another observation we made was that uh, perhaps uh, CPAP pressures, uh, CPAP is a continuous positive airway pressure, standard treatment for obstructive sleep apnea, may not be that good for a patient. Uh, they may have some uh, uh, unforeseen adverse cardiovascular uh, adverse effects, which may uh, counteract these beneficial effects of uh, expected effects rather of treating sleep apnea. So we think that would be important to uh, look at the very different levels of uh, this standard therapy uh, for sleep apnea to see whether 
uh, lower pressures perhaps work better in reducing cardiovascular risk as opposed to uh, currently prescribed fairly high uh, range of pressures. So that's fascinating and uh, so important and I think the um, emphasis you put on the uh, clinical and the basic mechanistic understanding and how that together can lead to potentially a clinical outcome um, is is really at this you know part of the strength of this meeting the vascular discovery community um, but also emphasizes um, how things like sleep which we know now on um, the American Heart Association has designated as, as an important uh, driver of, of cardiovascular health um, how it isn't um, and how important it is and how mechanistically you can show um, that how we need to to improve our understanding, improve sleep and sleep quality, um, and really to have an impact on cardiovascular health. So thank you, Dr. Jalik, for your presentation and for the plenary session, um, and thank you so much. Thank you very much. For